Right, hello, um, welcome. This video is, you're gonna get it to do this, okay? So we're basically getting these movers here to follow the mouse around the screen. All right, so we're introducing the concept of acceleration into our vectors, um, and that should be fairly straightforward. So what we're gonna be starting off with is, is where we left off with last time. Um, so, this is where we were and we just had our random bouncing ball. So we're going to convert this so these balls will follow the mouse instead of just bouncing around the screen. Okay. Now, a few things that we need to sort out first. Um, so let's um, so we've got our mover code here and we've got our form code here. Okay. Now, so where do we start? Well, the first thing is we need to do is need to add some new things to our mover class, okay? So let's go to our mover and we've got our location and velocity, which is great. Um, but we now also need to add some new things as well. And sorry, to our form code. No, our mover. No, no, that's right. Yeah, to our, our to our mover code. Right. So um, we've got location and velocity, um, but now we need we also need um, the acceleration as well. So that's going to be a vector two. Um, so vector two uh, acceleration, and we will. Sort that out later. Excel. Excel. That's how you spell acceleration, is it? Excel. Okay, and that will do that. We also need the mouse. Um, so that's going to be a vector. So that's going to be the mouse location. Now I'm going to declare uh, mouse equals. I won't. I'll just set this up straight away. So new vector two. To do this um, top speed um, we'll need as well which we'll come into later now this is a float okay and we also need to send in the form which will become apparent later this is to do with the mouse um, now, when I try form, it's not going to like that. Um, so FRM. Now, it had to add system windows form there in order to do that. I noticed it did it automatically, so that was, that was pretty decent. Okay. So when we create our object in our mover class, we're now going to have to add the form. Okay. Now this is for the mouse, so we're going to have to. Then this one slightly. So we're now going to add an, another parameter form and the form. Okay. So there we go. There's the form. Um, now, right. So we're in here now, and we can now make our global variable frm equal to the form. Okay, um, so we've done that. So we've got location and velocity. Mm, the location is still random, that's fine. Now we're going to set the velocity to be zero this time. So everyone's going to start at zero. So it's not going to have any velocity at all. That's so we can just, we can give it that with the um, um, later on. Now acceleration, we're going to set that up. So acceleration equals new vector to and what we're going to do here is it's a float and minus 0 0.001 now these these ones i've been trying with and bear with it it's you can mess around with the values yourself um, now the reason why we have to put float in front of here is because you write a literal number and it assumes it's a double, okay? Um, okay, there we go. 
Right, so we've given it uh, an acceleration. So it's the x is a minus value, okay, and the y is is a positive value. So it's sort of, sort of going in that direction, going down. All right. Okay. Now we're going to give top speed as well, and an arbitrary value here. So top speed equals seven. Okay. Again. You can you can mess with that as much as you like. That's because um, if we apply acceleration, now acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. If we keep applying an acceleration, then it's just going to go faster and faster and faster. Okay, it'll never stop. So that's, that's like that spaceship in there, the, the very low acceleration, but it goes along for any time. So I don't know what I'm talking about but on the spaceships there. But essentially, we've got to limit our, our our top speed, so it doesn't just accelerate forever. All right, or, or, or keep on going. Or otherwise, it'll just go crazy. Right, so there, there's our so we set up our mover now. Our, we should be crashing out in our form one code. Uh, notice I've renamed the video and um, the I've renamed the form to match. Also, what I changed was the paint object because it was picking up from the original, so it didn't look quite right. So I've just got to send in this. And okay, that should now still work. All right, but obviously no one's moving anymore because I set the um, the thing to zero. Right. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make them a bit smaller because they are they are too big um, for fooling around. So we'll sort that out in a minute. Right. So we've we've done that. Um, now, one of the big changes we've got to do is oh, let's let's do the size. So let's change that to twenty and that to twenty as well. And um, so our video, our movers now should look a lot smaller. Yeah. All right. So that's where they're going to start off. So if my mouse is there, they'd all converge onto that mouse. So that's the plan anyway. <laughs> right. Now, um, now because. Um, if, if you go look at Daniel Schiffman's stuff, he has his um, processing thing has a couple of methods that's not incorporated into C sharp vector stuff. So I'm going to nick those. All right. Well, I've, I've had to make them myself. So I'm going to nick these two methods here. So one's called magnitude and one's called limit. I'll explain what they're for in a minute. So let's just put those in. They can go anywhere in my mover class. I'm going to put them here. All right, we're not called them yet. Um, right, so we've got magnitude. The magnitude returns, if you remember, a length of a vector. So, so there's there's a so if I move it at three two there, the distance from the origin to that point there will be the magnitude. Okay. Now, um, so we've got these and we've got limit now what limit does you 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 just basically say if if it's within that range our vector uh, our magnitude of our vector is a certain limit if it's below that it's fine doesn't touch it but if it's at or above it will it will limit to it that okay again that was something that was provided in the nature of code video right let's go to the update because the update is the one we really need to mess with so this is remember this bit of code here is essentially just um, bouncing off the walls. We're not going to be bouncing off the walls anymore, so we can just delete that. Okay. Right. Now, what we need to do now is a bit of mouse stuff. So we need to find out where the mouse is. So, so I've got a point equals. Now this is where our form stuff comes in. So. Uh, point to client and then cursor dot position. Okay, so that that records uh, the x and y coordinates of our where our mouse is. So that gets that. So again, we we needed we didn't know that because our move is separate from the form, so we had to send in the form to find that out. Okay, so now we can say our mouse vector dot x equals cp dot x and our mouse dot y 
equals cp dot y. Okay, so now we got that. Okay, now we're going to need uh, another vector two, and this one's going to be called direction or da de. Okay. Now what we're going to do then is we're going to do some vector subtraction, which I'll explain now. Dot subtract. I've worked out why I do it like this is because it's how it does it on nature of code is similar sort of thing. So we're subtracting our location from our mouse coordinates. Now, how does that work then? Well, let's have a look. So if we've got our mover here and our mouse over there, then we need a vector to give us a direction from there to there. Now, if you just subtract, um, our mouse from our location it gives us a new vector 10 6 so it goes along 10 up 6 so what that's giving us then which is quite handy um, yeah, where's my draw, draw? Um, so we're going from there up to there all right so that that will give us a direction a vector in the, in the direction of where the mouse is so that's quite handy. We'll also, also have uh, a current velocity vector. So it will move. So let's say the, the current velocity is doing that. All right. So now we add those two vectors together, our velocity and our acceleration. So our acceleration is trying to pull us this way. This will give us another vector, not going straight towards the mouse, but more in the direction of. So we're adding that vector to that vector that will take us over to there. Obviously, what we don't, if this is the magnitude of the vector, this is where it's too much, all right? It will draw it straight in. So this is why we have to limit the, the actual acceleration vector. Otherwise, it will just be too much, right? So that's where the direction comes in, okay? So I don't know why I did that, but it seems odd, but that is the acceleration, so equals DIR. I don't know why I just didn't say acceleration equals that, but I've, I've done it like that now. Okay, it's just stupid, isn't it? Right, so our velocity equals um, the vector to do add. So we're gonna add to our velocity the acceleration. Or I could have just done DIR. I don't know why I did that. Okay, now, so our velocity. So our velocity then will be will be adding our acceleration to to our um, velocity. Okay. Now, now what we're going to do is limit our our speed. Okay, so it's going to be limit. There's our limit function there. And it's going to be top speed, which I think we said was seven. Um, and we send in the velocity, okay? Because that's what we're, we need to actually limit, okay? Right, so we've, we've added the acceleration to the um, velocity, okay? And then we've got a new velocity. Then we limit that so it doesn't go completely crazy, okay? Um, now, I think we are pretty much done. So we've got a location, we've got our new location where we just add up, that was as it was before. Um, now, ah, yes. No, I've missed out some code here. Yeah, I thought I had. Um, now, yeah, I missed out important, very two lines here. So we're gonna say our direction then. Now this is the bit I was, talking about earlier. So our vector two dot oops, equals vector two. Oh my god. I've got less than a minute. Hurry up. Vector two dot normalize now DIR. Now what normalize does is it reduces the the magnitude of our direction, which is our essentially 
to a, to a one. All right, so it doesn't matter how far away because if this is a long way, this would be a huge vector. Okay, so it would essentially give it a much more acceleration. But it's basically saying that that every doesn't matter how far away you is, the acceleration is going to be the same one. All right, then we're going to multiply. So we're going to say duh equals vector two dot multiply. And then what we're going to do is um, times it by 0.4. Now, I suggest what you do here is, is you try different values here because this is essentially what gives it. Um, so this reduces it down a bit more, the acceleration. Okay, so we're multiplying our direction uh, by 0.4. Now, notice I've had to put F there to indicate that that's a floating point number, not a decimal number. Right, so now we're done. So basically what we've done is we've normalized it. So that essentially means that it doesn't matter how far away you are from the mouse, you've got the, the same value. And then we reduce that down a little bit more, um, just under half, and then we'll see what happens. Right, I think I'm done. Um, so I've got vector two, duh, duh, acceleration equals that. Yeah, that, that's, that's why I use DIR, um, an idiot. Um, so we add the acceleration to the velocity, then we limit it so it doesn't just go on and on and on forever. I'll sh show the exact by messing around with these values, and you see you can get some quite good things. Right, so there we go. Um, I think we're good to go. Let's have a let's have a quick go. There we go. Just that, and it looks really good. I think um, the orbiting. Um, so if, if let's say if I reduced that to 0 0.6, well, I've upped it to 0 0.6. You notice it's a lot more, their attraction is, is, is much more, if you like, because the acceleration is more. If I reduce that, um, reduce that to 0 0.2, you know, there you kind of imagine They're not as attracted. Well, they, you know, they're like further away, if you like. So 0 0.4 seems to be a good one. Um, now, if I didn't have the, let's say we didn't have the normalize, um, let's see what effect that would have. Yeah, they just, and they get stuck there, All right? So. There we go. So there's, there, there's, there it is. So, you know, just, just a little bit of vector maths and you can get something looking really good, I think. Um, and, you know, it looks, looks quite good and kind of models, you know, what you'd expect in the real world. So there we go. Um, so what you need to do is get that one working as I say, just try different values. You can make make each ball different color. That would be quite nice. So you can randomize the colors um, and see, see what effect the different values have there. Obviously the top speed and things like that as well. Okay, there we go. That is, as I say, is that.